afternoon and evening. We are live again with Urban Sketchers. Hi, Christina. Um, it is Friday morning in Portland, west coast of the United States, and today we have two more guests. Um, Valentine's Day might be over, but our love for our USK instructors continues. And today I have Eileen. Um, today we have uh, two instructors from Europe that I'm super excited to to do a quick interview about their what they will be bringing to New Zealand. The symposium is getting really close. It's getting uh, it's getting very very real for all of us who are on the organizing end. Um, the goodies are starting to arrive from the sponsors. Um, you still have a chance to join us. Uh, if you haven't um, looked into it, please do. Hi, Gina from England. And Sakala from Portugal. Good to see you all. So I am Rita Sabler, the Education Director for Urban Sketchers. And today, my first guest guest is uh, used to live on the west coast of the United States. He unfortunately left us for Europe, won a big victory for them, but he will be um, very happy to say teaching a workshop for the first time. It will be his first symposium and that's Oliver Hula. Kind of whimsical uh, style and um, I am super excited that he will be teaching. Hello, Rita. For the first time. Hello, yes. everyone. <laughs> all the way. Thank from you. Vienna. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes, all the way from Vienna. And you know, let me tell you, I'm spreading my love between Europe and the US. <laughs> I, I'm noticing that. I think I, I saw I saw a post where you were vaguely. I am. I am. I am. I do love both both sides. No doubt about that. Yeah. So, so Oliver, tell us about what you're bringing <clears throat> yeah, um, yeah. to the symposium. That's in, in yeah. About I'm super excited. A a I'm super now. excited to come. I'm super excited to do that. And I think whoever comes and uh, joins me will be super excited to learn the sort of things that I have to share, because it's the sort of things that you don't hear talked about a lot. I find um, I've discovered those things by 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 doing them myself and then sort of teasing out what I was doing mm -hmm. and I realized not a lot of people talk about that and it's called design on the fly and condense reality you know as a lot of people talk about um, leaving things out in your sketches because you perhaps they don't fit or it's, it's sort of boring but you can also take a complementary approach and condense reality if re reality perhaps isn't true enough if you will you know if that if that makes if that makes sense <laughs> if there, if, the if it's reality too dispersed, dispersed, exactly, you can sort of condense <laughs> the energy and your impression of a place into one image mm -hmm. rather than into 10 images that all show one aspect. And this is sort of... So in other words, you're sort of... A concentrate. A concentrate. Now you can, you, can, you can tune that in a way, <laughs> you know, it's either adding one element because it just isn't, is inconveniently just not where you're... In your point on from your visible from your point of view but you wanted to move it a little closer mm -hmm. or you can really take things from all mm -hmm. over the place and design your own concentrate and it sort of has a very um it has a big power to sort of um, open the eyes of people to new opportunities when they go out sketching yeah yeah for sure. So what, what do you think is the advantage of kind of condensing things? Um, yeah, so I'm, I, so I'm very interested in the storytelling aspect of urban sketching as a lot of us are. And I think by condensing, condensing elements, you can tell, tell a better story at times. So just because things are not exactly where mm -hmm. next to each other, um, you, you can still sort of create the concentrate and convey your impression, your opinion, what, what it means to you in, in one sketch. So I think that's, this is what appeals to me. Yeah. Absolutely. And, um, you know, last but not Absolutely. least, it's just, it's just super fun. You know? <laughs> Let's not forget that. 
Well, if you haven't seen if you haven't seen Oliver's work, please uh, go 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 and check it out because it's it is so unique and it's so recognizable. It is so kind of fresh, whimsical, Thank you. fun. Um, it just it's gonna make you smile. So, and Oliver, please show us. Um, yeah, let me show you a few things a like this. <coughs> so I've picked a few examples that are on the extreme ends of the spectrums because otherwise <laughs> they might just look like a normal city scene and you won't pick up on what I want to convey today. Okay, so this would be one where I took an approach similar to a movie poster. You know, you know these movie posters where there's a character in the middle and then there's all these mm -hmm. scenes of what's happening. And this is from Marrakesh in Morocco and this is a, um, this is a portrait and there's all that stuff that's happening on location that are then sort of squeezed into the hair shape. So I started with the portrait and there is all that stuff. Oh, okay. It so might be harder to see. You have to look. You there's lots look of closely, little stuff going on. The yeah. The there's even a, is, there's a lot of, yeah, there's even there's a, a whole scene. Uh, that's there's even a snake here there. fused, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> It also it is also very a very useful approach if you if you have some of those tools under your belt to sort of record um, stories on the go. Mm -hmm. So this is um, this is done during a city tour in Malaga in Spain, and all these little pieces mm -hmm. of um, of the city I combined into sort of a larger narrative by overlapping them and fusing them and combining them, sort of condensing the whole condensing the whole thing into one into one image, if you will. Um, I'd like to, yes. So you were, so you were, say, doing a tour over the course of the day, but you put different elements. This is a is friend of ours who, who did the, the tour, who was the, the tour guide. Game. So I put in um, captions and stuff. And then, uh -huh. you know, sometimes I didn't know how much mm -hmm. time I was going to have. How mm -hmm. I, I had no idea how long he was going to talk about certain things. So I, quite a lot of times, I start with this, with one element, and then if there's more time, I can grow it into a bigger mm -hmm. into a bigger spread. Well, combine it with other things. So this is sort of um... <coughs> this is this is a great um, a great kind of approach to use because I often go on tours and of course I get <clears throat> really anxious to draw things. I know. So yes. I just just stand there and listen and take photos. <coughs> so as as you're drawing on tour, first of all, you never know yes. when the group's going to move on. <laughs> you're going to be left behind there with your sketchbook. So what are some things that you can, some decisions that you can make um, in the moment of, of doing a tour and, and trying to record things? In um, so one thing that I'd like to, I try to go, go for the throat, if you will, like, you know, what's the most important thing? Put that down. <laughs> and if that is down, then I can relax a little bit because I know then I, the rest is sort of supporting stuff. Yeah. So that means that you need to be quick to decide what's important and then put it down and then mm -hmm. take a take mm -hmm. a breath and you know mm -hmm. okay you can now fuss around for longer or you can just move depending on how the situation develops yes yes and the question that we always get asked a lot i'm sure you do too is is do you do everything <coughs> on, on site do you do color or do you just go for lines and then um because color could be yeah so unifying element yeah. at the end that kind of ties so, all these different so I do together. my color work on location. Um, sometimes I also do the, oh, sorry, I do my line work on location. Sometimes I also do the color work on location, but I'm not so strict with myself on that. And actually I find once you know some, once you have some principles about form and shape um, under your belt, it can be as, um, as contrarian as it sounds, <laughs> can be an advantage to sort of do it after the fact, because you might, you, it might get easier for you to put on a certain color scheme if you're not sort of um, distracted by the by some of the colors that you see in real life. Um, so it's it's a mixed blessing. And mm -hmm. the biggest reason why I don't do it on location is I hate waiting for color to dry. So this is one thing, mm -hmm. a practical thing. So if I feel like if in the middle of a city tour, yeah. I would probably not color straight away. But I, a lot of times I use um, gray marker. I like that. Mm -hmm. And your color is, is very, very expressive. So some people would argue, oh, you know, are you doing urban sketching? Because it's pretty, it, you know, it's, it comes completely the color. from your Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends. <laughs> I feel it, it, 
it feels very real. It depends on what you think of reality. If, it, if you want to convey emotion as well and a feeling, mm -hmm. and I think the best sketches are the ones that give you a subjective impression of a place, that communicate that aspect. This is, I think, where we can set ourselves apart mm -hmm. from the camera um, pretty strongly. So I think we should use that ability as well, if we so choose to. I don't think we should be too strict on ourselves and tie ourselves in all aspects to the literal reality that we see. Does that make sense? Okay, there you go. So use your emotion. How do you feel about this? As, yeah, as I mean, and you, you can also you can also color That's code places, by... for example. That's a nice thing as well. You know, you you go through through your holiday, you visit different towns or different um, cities, and you color code them. Like in the movies, I mean, yes. the, the movies are pretty. You know, the movies do a similar thing. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. The they do color grading as well. Color yes. correction. In <laughs> <laughs> well, Oliver, I'm sure our um, sketchers can't wait to, well, first join your workshop if, yes, they, please. if they're so lucky, but also maybe get a little tip or get, see how you draw and, and maybe something you can show Yes, us I'll do a little, guys, guys, I'll do a little demo for you, okay? So you see me fail in real time. This is a great opportunity for all of us. <laughs> um, let me just quickly set this up. Okay. Okay. So what I want to show you is sort of an, the essence of, of, of what we want to achieve, I think. Now imagine you look to your left and you see a house or a church or whatever it is. Okay. And maybe there isn't much else. You, st you look straight ahead and what you see are perhaps some trees or some bushes or whatever, some vegetation. Okay. So this could be all individual images just because you turn your head and maybe you look to the right and what you see is some sort of statue. Okay, so let's see. Usually it's someone, I'm making this up as I go along. So this could be three individual images, but you could also choose to combine them into one image by sort of putting them into proximity. And we'll talk about all the ways that you can put them together and how you can connect them and ideas and challenges and things like that. But I'll just quickly do one of those so that you can see how reality actually becomes condensed here. If you, you if you think it, those elements are important. So here, here you're condensing this, this space, the geographical distance, all the exactly. things are still there. They're just you not just sort of closely take one from here, together. one from here and one from here and combine them all into mm -hmm. one, into one, into one image. And then sort of to make it pop a little more, you can adjust some, some value. These are just two, two markers, um, a medium toned tomboy marker and a, and a light valued. And you see that you, that you arrive pretty quickly at something that looks like, like a sketch. And I would argue that it can be, it can be a more interesting version of reality to combine it in that way. It's sort of, so this would be a, this would be what we are dealing with and what we what we'll unpack in the symposium with all of you lovely people who join me. Yes. So you can condense <clears> the <throat> space and you probably can You can all, you could also time condense time. time. There's a lot of oh, no, there's a lot of can. things that will that will that will talk about different things. Um, now one one tip if you want to play with that sort of thing ahead of time is to think about the mm -hmm with any of those approaches is to think about the overall silhouette that you're creating. So if those are elements that you, that you choose to draw, then think about mm -hmm. how you arrange those, oops, we're getting a little, how you arrange those elements on the page. Because there's the overall the shape, shape of, of your, your drawing. drawing. There's, so I would argue that this is more interesting than this 
okay if it has a little bit more um, projections and things like that and more, oh, and more interesting overall shape. So this, is, this and many other things are little things and you can see how quick we can understand those concepts but if we just become aware of them and then we can go about and apply them to situations in real life on location. Perfect. It makes a lot of sense how you um, combine things, you kind of uh, condense space and time and you strive for an those are some some of the elements of yeah exactly drawing. so that so. is mm -hmm. so it's this more a, dynamic yes exactly yeah mm -hmm. um well we're ready <coughs> for questions for for oliver if anybody maybe there's one thing I, with him um, if you just yesterday i had the opportunity to do a sort of a longer live sketchbook tour and uh, talk about tips and tricks in more more extensively mm -hmm. also about the the um, my workshop at the symposium so if anyone wants to um, listen to that or watch that in more in more detail um, you can easily do that by hopping over to my account and find a link in the in the bio or in the stories and then you can you can watch that if you're interested and want to sort of keep those ideas rolling in your head <laughs> i'm interested i want to i want to see it i saw a little i saw a little bit of it that was super intriguing but it cut off like right at the point where it was really, yeah it's really so um, yeah so, any questions well i i saw somebody was asking um about your last name it's i was just pr practicing your umlaut yes it umlaut? well done you yeah <laughs> hola. Hola. yes hola. perfect hola. but um <laughs> Yes, yeah. it's H-O-E, yeah. yeah. right? It would be an O with, a, -E with two dots on top, but um, so. yeah, either goes. <coughs> Any more questions for mm. Oliver while he's with us? Well, maybe I've exhausted everyone. Thank, thank you all for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> I doubt it, I doubt it. Um, maybe you can show us just before Absolutely. you go a yeah. couple more so, here are a few pieces from, from Vienna. Um, so you'll see this Beautiful. is sort of, you know, there's lots of um, old architecture, like castles and stuff like that, statues and um, imper imper um, yeah, gardens and stuff like that. Another good idea, that I, another thing that I like to play with, um, if, if I find that it gets too boring, then it's sort of to change um, scale of things a little bit. And, when you try when you mm -hmm. play with that um you realize that the narrative power changes like the meaning changes and suddenly you see new opportunities of, of, of what's happening and what how that actually re relates what your emotions and your feeling and your, your impression of the place um i can totally see it changing scale oliver there's a question do you use markers or watercolor <coughs> primarily for coloring later you know um i use I use both. Um, I use watercolor for large areas and for the for its ability to to generate gradients and smooth transitions. But then I go in mm -hmm. with markers for little details because it really makes it pop. Like I go in with markers to sort of both tone tune things down with gray markers sometimes, and then really with very colorful um, markers to highlight certain little areas. And I like the effect if it's more felt than seen. If that makes sense. Um, I don't like, yeah, it sort of, it Suggest feels, things. Yeah. I feel a lot of times um, watercolors can have this sort of eternal autumn, you know, you have eternal fall. <laughs> and, if, <laughs> and if your sketch um, has that, if it has that um, outcome, then a little, some sprinkles of uh, markers can sort of give it the, the necessary pop. <laughs> Aha, eternal fall, you don't want to get too melancholy <laughs> no feel free i mean if you feel free to choose um, that i'm just saying like if this is something that you object to or feel like you want to spice it up a little i found that in my sketches that i like to do that i don't want i don't want to be too garish with my colors um so i'm happy with that fall mm -hmm. atmosphere but i want certain pops as well <laughs> there were a couple of questions also about um if you can show us the specific markers that you like 
um, <coughs> they bleed through the paper. Okay, um, so I use Tombow markers for the gray markers. I use Tombow water soluble ones. I also use alcohol based ones. Sometimes mm -hmm. they do bleed through, which is which is a bummer. Um, yeah, for the for the color markers i pretty much take whatever my son has lying around or doesn't um doesn't watch closely at the moment um i'm not i'm not um, picky about those because i'm not yeah. i'm not using them at maximum you know capacity or sort of getting the most out of it i'm using it for little details and anything that your kids or grandkids or little husband or wife or whoever doesn't watch closely has lying around use it <laughs> So basically, you're you're proposing um, stealing per from permanent kids. borrowing. Use your kids. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the the feeling is mutual. Like I see my stuff disappear at times. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm more on that end of, of, of the spectrum with my tools. <laughs> well, Oliver, thank you. It's been such a delight <laughs> to have you, and it's always it always brings a smile to my face, a grin to my face. Thank see, you, Rita. To see your work because it's just so fantastic. Thank you, Rita. Then. It's so fun. So, and I can't wait. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to see you um, in, in New Zealand. And please don't go away uh, because we have uh, someone joining us from Madrid, <coughs> and that's uh, Joaquin, who's also a first time instructor. So Great. Is a is a prolific sketcher. He has more than 36 books, but it's his first time teaching at the symposium. So we're very lucky to have him. And uh, Oliver, you can stand I will. I'll be happy to. to. I'm, I'm just going to look for We him. met briefly in, um, at the Rendezvous de Can at the um, Canet de Voyage, and I'm, I'll be happy to, to talk more, close, to, more extensively with him and sort of connect more at the symposium. So... <laughs> And here he wow. is. Wow. Hello. 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 Hey, good Hola. to see you. Hi, from Madrid. Yeah. How is it going? Fine. It's yeah. Nice to meet you all again. Fine. We met each other in France uh, last November. And, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will meet you again in Auckland. Yes. Um, so we have uh, just absolutely, and you guys' styles are so yep. different. Um, I, I, you know, if you if you just put side by side, it's it's two people looking at the same thing. In fact, I think maybe that's the game we should play when we're yeah. in New Zealand: <laughs> is to make the two of you sketch the same scene and then show it side by side yeah. because it will be yeah. that's completely, that's right. <laughs> yeah. completely different. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, we could do it. Yeah. Yes, and and while while I have while I have both of you here on on the screen, maybe you can both share something that you're really looking forward to uh, to do to see um, in just about a month and a half when we're. Well, I'm definitely here. looking forward to meeting all lots of new people reconnecting with people that I know but I don't don't see as often as I'd like to, and then. I feel like whenever whenever there's a group of um, sketching enthusiasts, it can easily turn into like drinking from a fire hose. You know, you're flicking through sketchbooks and and you get all excited and and you get all energized and exhausted at the same time. But it's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is very all of your metaphors. By the way. I just spot on. <laughs> drinking from the fire hose is exactly how it feels because it's so much experience so much joy uh so much energy all condensed in a matter of three days and it goes by quickly but it's it's exhausting and joyful at the same time and joaquin yeah, it's, you? Uh, for me it's, it's not the, my first symposium but it's, uh, the first one uh, that i will be teaching on that uh my first experience was in 2013 in barcelona and i was uh, kind of part of the staff as, as I was uh, translating uh, Virginia Haynes' uh, workshop into, into Spanish. And, uh, and I repeated in, uh, in Porto again, so um, uh, I'm just looking forward for, for that uh, atmosphere and that, that uh, concentration of, of sketches there and uh, exchanging experiences and, and seeing people 
doing the same as you in, in a different way, as you say. Absolutely, yes. So it's it's the concentrated energy, kind of what uh, <laughs> Oliver was showing us <laughs> in his work. He'll be right at home. Well, Oliver, thank you so much again for your time. Uh, we're gonna give Joaquin his his full half. Thank you, guys. So thanks for having me, and I'm looking forward to to watching <laughs> the rest of it. Um, okay. See you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Well, here we go. Thank you, Oliver oh, and Joaquin. Hello. How are things? Fine. Muy bien. In my, ¿Cómo bien. estás? Bien. Qué gusto ver. Igualmente. Muy bien. Um, Joaquin, if you don't know his work, it has authored over I, at least yeah, 36 books now. on, on mm -hmm. sketching mm -hmm. all over the world. So he is the, the veteran uh, travel sketcher. He has traveled and drawn uh, places in Africa and yeah, Europe and five and continents. So uh, I love to, to travel and I love to sketch. So I, I joined them together in, in my travel sketchbooks. Yeah. Yeah, can we see some yeah, examples yeah. of your work? Because I'm sure um, people okay. who are not familiar would love uh, to see that. Let's go. Uh, for instance, this is a um, this is a work um, on Italy. It's wow. Amalfi Coast. Uh, is a a book uh, of Italy on that part. Uh, Cosicano, uh, Pompeii, although all that area around uh, Napoli. In fact, in, Don't go so <laughs> oh, well, you, you can see it in my web page anyway, but uh, you know, it's like a kind of work I do. I like to not only sketch, uh, do spare sketches, but uh, combine them with uh, typography, with some elements, with, uh, mm -hmm. some tickets, some uh, plans and, and things. And that, that's what the, my workshop will be about in, in Oakland, basically. Yeah, so what is the title of your workshop? Let's My, the title is Sketching is Just the Beginning. So it's uh, the goal of the workshop is to make a spread uh, with different elements. Not only sketches, we will be sketching, of course, but uh, I want uh, participants to uh, mix things, uh, to use uh, lettering, to use uh, a, a little map of the place, to stick things. Uh, we will be sketching on a park, uh, so there will be plenty of, uh, of leaf, uh, flowers or whatever they find, even papers uh, or whatever. And uh, the goal is to combine all that and get a, 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 a total spread with all the elements they can find uh, in the surroundings. Here we go. So you have kind of the main element, which is yes. the drawing of the place. And you often do this kind of panoramic or very strong perspective of uh, a one point perspective of a, yeah. of a place and that kind of holds mm -hmm. together the page and then you add little elements yeah. that complete this story and those elements are yeah those elements could be anything that could be uh, placed on a on a sketchbook anything that is uh, 2d so that it you can stick it or you can draw it or you can uh, uh, copy some some typography you find uh, in the in the place and imitate it for making the title or whatever. My main goal with my travel sketchbooks is not only to to make nice drawings of the place, but uh, also to give information to to the readers about the place. So that's uh, essential that you find different elements uh, that you find around and put them all together in the sketchbook. Yeah, for example, you draw pretty mm. accurate mm. maps, right? So people can can rely on those. And you you work with, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you work with the publishers that do travel books. So like yeah, guidebooks yes. on, uh, on yeah, places like Lonely I, I have published uh, a few with Lonely Planet, uh, then some uh, publisher in Spain as well. And um, what I do is normally I, I do the, the main drawing that is this one, and then I add some some secondary elements like this title in lettering here. 
Can you lift it up just yeah. a, a tiny bit so we can see uh, for and just hold it for a minute? Um, the map I there is not very exact map, gorgeous but it uh, gives you a the location, the situation <laughs> of the place. And um, I mean, in other yeah. ones, there's uh, like uh, some other elements. Uh, here is a, a fish I, I had for lunch that day, so I include it there. And there's some um, text here, the, the name of the place. Here mm -hmm. you find also a main sketch, which is this landscape. But you also find uh, things like this is uh, an element uh, very representative of, of Positano. And this is a, a souvenir bag that I saw uh, at the street. So anything you, you find at the place. Oh, you drew a souvenir mm -hmm. bag. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. Sometimes um, I know I'm sometimes in this position. I don't know what to draw other than the, the scene, mm -hmm. the scenery, of course. What are some elements that people can kind of tune into and pay attention to that could help tell a story, complete the story? I'm talking about yeah. the smaller elements. Yeah, I mean, that that's include. essential to give the, the complete information about the place. It's not only the, the, the main photo, let's say, that you can see when you go to a place, mm -hmm. but also the small elements like uh, the lamps uh, in the street, uh, the fire lights, uh, whatever gives you some feeling of being there, you know? Mm -hmm. We call it urban yeah, furniture, <laughs> things that, things that uh, you see in places that we usually tune out because it's like garbage cans or benches or uh, mm -hmm. street lamps, but they are very specific, a lot of times very specific to the place and they can help mm -hmm. tell its story yeah. and give you yeah, something yeah. to draw. Because and there's some elements that uh, what I intend normally is to not only focus on the, on the main thing that you see when you arrive there, but make a composition with different elements that could be drawn in, in different uh, styles, even maybe let I show you. This is a page uh, of a book uh, of Vietnam, you see, and this is in Korean. Yeah. So you here you can see there's some title that's it's kind of oriented style. Mm -hmm. I, let's say, uh, that gives you also some information about the place. And there's uh, drawings that are in watercolor like this, and these ones are, are in uh, ink normally. And this this is a small plan, you see here, is a small plan of, of one of the houses. So it gives some more uh -huh. info about this house that it's like this. This is the main patio, which is a a small detail of, of the main drawing. So it's a, a bit of everything like test and, and things that could have some info about the place. So the elements you include actually are also educational because you learn, oh, you know, this is how a traditional house mm -hmm. looks like in this place and, and you do a lot of writing. Yes, yes. yes. Well. First, first of all, I have to, to, to make some exploration about the place and knowing about the, the facts of the, the history and the, the main uh, things to see there. And then uh, my intention is to transmit that so everyone that reads the book or sees the images would feel that he knows the place somehow. Yes, exactly. What would you recommend people write down? I often have students who say, you know, I. I, I feel like I need to include writing, but I never know uh -huh, what to write exactly. down. Well, that's uh, that's a good question because some people tend to to write uh, like personal experiences there. Uh, I normally don't in the in this big book. I, I have a small uh, notebook where I find, where I write text of, of whatever happens to me during the trip. But in this uh, text, um, I normally just add the information that you don't really get in the in the main sketch in the drawings you get part of the information and uh, if you want to to be more specific mm -hmm. about the some little details that you don't can't see in the uh, in the image like uh, the history of the place or something i just write 
it's just two or three mm -hmm. lines to fill the gaps, but uh, that's mainly the text. Interesting. And do you get that information as part of the research before or after or during? Are you on a tour? How do you get uh, uh, this? Normally, uh, I used to read something about the place I'm visiting, but uh, most of the time I find um, like uh, signs with, uh, with the information about the place. And when mm. I get to, to do the, the little maps of the place, uh, Mostly I do it from the things I find there, but sometimes I also uh, look in Google Maps for the for the exact map of the place. That's very helpful too. So um, I use whatever I can. Yeah. Whatever you can find, just the 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 information that is helpful mm -hmm. that cannot be drawn. So there you have it. Um, any questions for Hawking? He is going to show us a video um, at the end of just kind of how he puts a page together with different elements that is explained in English and Spanish. So stay tuned for that. But uh, while we have him here, any questions for, for him from the sketchers who are watching us live? <laughs> so excited to see you very soon yeah. in New Zealand and sketch together. Yeah, sure. We've also crossed paths mm -hmm. in Madrid and uh, several times yeah. in Clermont de Voyage, um, where Joaquin is also yeah. regular, obviously, yeah. with his style. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I used to go like <laughs> almost every year there to, to not only to show what I did, but to see what people are doing uh, during the last year. Okay, question. How do you think about har uh, color harmony? Color harmony. Uh, well, I normally start with uh, uh, people ask me frequently if I have it, the design of the of the play of the page in mind before doing it. But normally I start with the with the main drawing, like uh, let's say a, a general view of a place, and I use uh, most of the colors that I can find uh, in in reality in, in the scene. And after that, uh, I uh, uh, after I do the main drawing. So, for instance, the title, the color of the titles, uh, you could put anything there. But depending on the colors of the of the first image, I try to combine them to to get a, a, a nice harmony in all the page. We have so many questions. I hope we can get to all of them. That makes a lot of sense what you just explained about color. So using the color from the scene to fill in the, um, the, mm -hmm. the same elements. Um, I have some more questions here. When adding text and map, do you um, reserve some space for in your sketch for those? In other words, how do you plan your mm -hmm. page? Do you already know where yeah, that's a good question. what? In fact, it's just the, the, the heart of the matter to uh, to know what to what to put in which place. And normally, I use the the rule of uh, starting with the main a main sketch that fills, uh, let's say, like sixty percent of the page. It could be wherever, wherever mm -hmm. I find uh, the place to put it. Maybe in the middle, maybe at the right or the left, and then uh, after them main sketch i do like small details in in some white uh, spaces left in the page then i add the the title and then uh, at the end i feel let's say fill the gaps the white gaps that are left in the page with the small text so maybe i don't use uh, a lot of text if there is not uh, a lot of gaps but if the uh, like uh, tiny uh, empty places in the page. I use those um, mm -hmm. empty places to place uh, some text and that gives uh, some um, nice composition all around. Uh, to, I try not, not to leave uh, too many empty spaces around, if you know what I mean. Gotcha. Susan is asking if, um, Specifically about your Pompeii yeah. sketch, you did the whole foreground building first, 
and if um, I keep losing, <laughs> uh, you use setup lines. What advice do you have about the easiest way to do? Well, that's that Pompeii page that I showed you before. I show you now just to remember was this one. This one is it's a nice sample mm -hmm. and is um, I have a, a YouTube channel too. And in this case, uh, I did this um, this double page there on place, and I recorded it. So uh, you can follow uh, in that video in, in YouTube. You can follow the whole process uh, live. That uh, when I start, when I started, and how I followed, and I think to resume things, I started with the main with the main sketch, which was this, and then I had. Mm -hmm. all this place empty so i i did this sketch here which filled mostly this page and then i i had this one which, which was very vertical here so i have this empty space here mm -hmm. so i continued with this little part yeah. and i uh, i filled this with a with a um, title which is behind the sketch and then the small gaps I, I feel with this is a ticket, a, a real ticket, an entrance ticket of the of Pompeii. And then all these things here are other afterwards to fill the gaps. Hmm? That's my view. There you have it. So start with the main the main subject, sort of mm -hmm. the hero, and then yeah, well, in fact, that's, fill in the that's one of the things uh, that I explained in, in the video that you will show afterwards. How do you start with the main mm -hmm. thing and then go filling uh, gaps until you do you have the the real composition the entire That's the entire page filled. Uh, so Joaquin, thank you so much for your time. Maybe before you go, if you can sh show quickly some of your yep. favorite sketching tools. That's yep. always a popular subject with sketchers. What do you uh, use to do uh, I'm very let's say classical about sketching. I use uh, normally a, a, pe a pencil first for a, a quick uh, rough and then I go with uh, markers like this is uh, calibrated pens uh, like Unipin or whatever is like this and then uh, I go with uh, the classical pencil, water pencil, water. Uh, water brush, that's it. Water brush. Uh, and then uh, I use uh, watercolor normal that's your that's your palette that you yes. take with you yeah all over that's the it but i take with me normally is like uh, two kits like this this is for pen pen and and the uh, um, markers and this is for brushes and, and colors um, and this is uh, my uh, watercolor box and I have some I have some extra mm. elements that not many sketches use, but I do like um, blue. The secret one. The glue stick. Oh, the glue stick. And uh, <laughs> scissors. These are folding mm -hmm. scissors like this. It's important to for them to be small and and unfoldable because uh, they go easily through the scanners of the airports, and that's. The main thing. Really? Yeah, yeah, I've traveled with him. I, I just recently had my yeah, scissors they, confiscated. They seem so like a, a little city. glasses or something, though they don't care about it. Yes. Yeah, you don't see the, the, <laughs> the main uh, yes, shape of a scissor, so it's easy yeah. to, to pass by uh, at the airports. Well, Joaquin, thank, thank, thank you. you so much. Um, we've learned so much about how to create a beautiful spread that tells the story of the place with a little bit of history, with uh, with a map, with mm -hmm. some tickets, uh, some kind of collage mm -hmm. elements, and of course the gorgeous spread of, of, of the main sort of the, the hero subject. So if you can join us in New Zealand, there's still some tickets left. Um, okay. Joaquin will be there. He will be teaching workshops and doing a demo and normally you can find him in Madrid. I sketched with yeah. him in the Plaza Real. It was very nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, we have so many active uh, With you a group get... of, of all the Madrileños. Very active Yuba Sketches Madrid so, group. Uh, um, join us again next week. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it's a it's a huge, huge group. Um, and before we'll say goodbye to Joaquin, but before we all go, we have a little video that he shared. So okay. please enjoy. Okay. Thank bye you. Bye. See you Adios. soon. Gracias. Bye bye. Ta -ta. So here we go. Hopefully it plays. And this is Joaquin putting his beautiful double spread together. He explains in both Spanish and English about how this is done. Thank you again all for joining us. We were live with Oliver and Joaquin today and we'll see you next week.